Thank you for calling the Drayton District Beach Heart. The time of this recording is 1 a.m. Saturday, October 21st. Humboldt Station has completed the 2023 sugar beet harvest. Hi everyone. Oh, so we have arrived down in Quartzsite and just trying to unwind. Uh, before I start talking about what's going on here, I want to show you all what we just did. The sugar beet harvest. A record harvest as far as quantity of beets and a record for the continuous number of days worked in a row according to our supervisor who's been doing this a while so and and record great weather so watch these clips i tried to document as much of it as i could while it was happening i think you're going to find it pretty interesting we're about 15 13 miles from our destination and it's just farmland here as far as you can see. I've already seen several trucks go by with beets in them. So they're pulling beets from some fields already. So let's hope that we can get to work ASAP once we get here. I don't want this guy to get too bored while I'm working. All right, we're getting close. This is the town of Halleck coming up here. Two miles and make a turn and then another four tenths of a mile to be at the campground. So we're we're just about there. In a quarter mile, turn right onto 7th Street South. Auto parts store. There's a Dollar General. And if I remember right, this is our turn right here. Take the next right onto 7th yep. Street South. Yeah, I remember this little motel right here. In 800 feet, turn right to stay on 7th Street South. Testing out the grass. So there's our rig. And there's the Red Red River or Red Creek. Red River, I believe. So when we were here four years ago, this flooded and came up over this whole area. And they finally ended up closing down the campground. Okay, lap. You're already getting wrapped up. Here, come this way. Come on. And you just did it again. See, we're slanting downward a little, but the back end of my rig is still higher than the front because of my airbags and the good shocks. So my head will be higher than my feet. That's all that matters. And we look to be perfectly level. So I'm happy about that.
see how to boo-boo here. He got into something. I think it gave him an allergic reaction and he had a whole area and one up here on top too where he broke out and ended up with you know like they ended up as like sores mm -hmm. it, and they scabbed mm -hmm. over and mm -hmm. it's taken me a long time to mm -hmm. get them to heal and the scabs finally came off it was really tough let me finish talking hold on here it was really tough for me to get him to not scratch because this this here was almost healed and then one day he scratched it and I came over and the whole side of his face was blood because he had scratched the scab off it finally got it all oh, hey what are you doing so now his hair just hair has to grow back so he ended up with one little one little bumper on top. Oh. You don't want to hear me talk anymore? Okay. I was just telling people that we're concerned. And this spot. Come here. So anyways, trying to tell you a story, but he won't let me. guys hi puppy let me finish making my coffee okay Got me a good shower this morning. Feels good. Shaved. And here in a couple hours, we've got to drive over to get our safety training done. Uh, if it's like it was four years ago, it's they throw you in a room and you watch a video and, <laughs> you know, safety training. We've all been through it at some point probably in our lives. Not the most exciting thing. Jeff ran into town to do his laundry. Uh, so we're just hanging out. I'm going to make some bacon and eggs, get something in my stomach. I think we're going to be there. Uh, if I remember right, it's like from 1 o'clock to... It's a few hours. It's not like an hour. It's going to be a few hours. So we're getting uh, geared up for that. And then probably tomorrow we're going to go to a piling site for some training. But... We'll find that out uh, today, I think. Okay, just got back from uh, safety training. About two hours. Not a big deal. Got our uh, safety gear. You know, you get a fluorescent yellow vest, a hard hat, safety glasses, gloves. I think that's it. Uh, so I got all that gear. Now tomorrow morning at 8.45... We have on-site training, can go from two to four hours depending on who's running it from what they said. And that's back where we just went, which is Drayton, which is about, it's about 24 miles from here. That's not where we're gonna be working though. We're gonna be working at, they assigned us to the Humboldt site, which is where we worked before, which is really the closest one to here, but there's also another one called Kelly, and it's about the same distance, but they have us, uh, assigned to the Humboldt. That's what they had on our paperwork. Also, on the 27th, we have on-site at the actual piling site, and that's where we'll first have the crew and all that. So that's on the 27th. So um, th they don't typically start the harvest until October 1st. They're, they're waiting for the exact right weather conditions, temperature, 
um, before they start pulling the beets out, I guess, so they have the maximum sugar quantity in them. Uh, it's, you know, it's somewhat to do with the weather and being able to get them out of the ground and the fields aren't too muddy, but they also want the right weather conditions for pulling them out. So, and I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm a layman. So tomorrow morning, uh, that's the next thing we got to do. Jeff's a little bit behind me. He had to do some additional paperwork um, that I did online. So he, he's a little bit behind us. So I'm going to get something to eat and uh, sit here and relax. It's raining a little bit, very light sprinkle. But it's very warm out. I mean, it's it's got to be dang near 70 degrees, uh, but just a little bit of sprinkles and kind of overcast. So I just plugged this into shore power. So I'm getting a charge through with the inverter charger. So if you're installing a system in your rig, I highly recommend maintaining and keeping your shore power option. And that means installing an inverter charger like I have. I really highly recommend that. So in cases like this, if you have the opportunity to plug in, you just plug right in and you can run all your electrical systems, your batteries get fully charged, you got nothing to worry about. So do that if you can. Good morning. You hear that? It's 6.30 a.m. making coffee. We're supposed to go up for our yard training this morning. Uh, starts at 9, be there at 8.45. Uh, so that's an hour and 40 minutes from now. So hopefully these kind of sprinkle showers have been passing over us. Uh, this is the heaviest it's rained. All right, that's this morning. Well, I am, we just came back from our training session. You know, it rained quite a bit last night and this morning. And so getting back up into our spot, it's the first time I think I've ever spun the tires in the rig. Backing up here, it's up a hill, it's full of mud. I get up here, so I'm out looking at it, thinking I gotta move to a different spot. Lefty jumps out of the cab of the truck. I didn't think anything of it. I got him by his collar and brought him around this side. And then I see him laying down out here and he's got blood all over his paw. When he jumped out something, he caught one of his toenails and ripped it right up. So <laughs> I just got out my gauze and some wrap here buddy and wrapped his paw he he's the toenail is like the quick is fully exposed under the toenail and the toenail is just like hanging there so now he's gimp and I don't know what to do with it I just wrapped some gauze around it and then some wrapping around that And he hasn't even, we weren't even able to go for our walk this morning because it was pouring rain before we went to the, the training. So I only took him for a quick walk under the umbrella. So I just fed him. I gave him extra chicken. <laughs> I mean, it was, this is a challenge enough being at the sugar beet harvest. And now we've got a muddy site and Lefty ripped his toenail. I don't know what to do. That's This has never happened before. I don't know if, I don't know what to do. So I'm gonna have to Dr. Google and figure out what do you do if a dog rips a toenail. I've got to assume it's gonna grow back. I mean, it is off. It's, I don't know what he, he must have hung it. You know, he jumped out of the driver's seat, out the door, onto the grass. I don't know what he hung it on. Not a good morning. Not a good morning. I don't know what to do. I'm going to have to 
Dr. Google. And it is just nasty. Okay. So I wrapped some gauze, you know, around to, you know, <clears throat> hold the toenail in place. And then I put some of this self-clingy stuff around it. But I don't know what to do. I know this stuff, you can't go too tight. So you don't want me to mess with it. I, after I wrapped it, I kind of put my hand around it and put some pressure on it and he yelped. So it's obviously not feeling great. Talk about challenges. Unbelievable. Okay, we just got back from the vet. Come here, puppy. Show me the papa. Let me see. Put me the papa. Come on. Papa? Papa? So the, the vet took the clippers and snap! And Lefty let out a yelp like, oh, it made me feel terrible. But it, I think he feels a lot better, so the toenail isn't sticking up anymore. It's just kind of chopped off. He's still not perfect, but I think you can see it a little bit there. See the one that's chopped off? So they gave us some antibiotics and some anti-inflammatory pain meds. So I'm going to get some of these in him right now. And they said a couple weeks that'll start to grow back. Um, really nice, you know, very small town vet. You know, I call them. They don't know me. An appointment two hours later. Old gentleman came in. He was the doctor. He had the clippers hidden behind his back. Got lefty up on the table. I held his head nice and steady. The guy got his paw and just snap like that. And then he wanted to look at it. And Lefty was grumbling when he wanted to look at it. But, you know, just the one clipping. Uh, it felt so bad hearing him howl like that. But he seemed very happy afterwards. <laughs> so he's, you know, he can get around and all that. He's just, you know, he's a little bit bonkers. So I got to keep him... I gotta keep him tamed a little bit, I think, for a few days and let that kind of start to heal up. Have him not go wackadoodle on me. So, I, and I just moved spots. I'll show you what happened over here. So this is from leaving this morning and then coming back. You know, it was all flat so obviously not going to last so now I'm on grass this is actually the other half of Jeff's plot so he's just going to park his jeep over here I got that side I've got a power pole on the other side to plug into and at least it's grass all the way back to the road so this should be better We got two items for sale here in Halleck. That's a case tractor. And that looks like a Jeep. Take a look at this rig. It's got dual axles in the back. Dodge front end. I have never seen one of these. Let's see if we can get a brand name off of it. 
Come here. Ram 3500 with dual axles. That is interesting. Get this pickup. That is awesome looking. In the mood for fall. That is so cool. Very fall looking. Oh, this whole house is really decorated in fall. What a cute place. They got the hook up for the pumpkins. Oh my gosh, look at that tiny little tricycle. That is <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Come on. No, we're not going to visit them. Come on. Come on. Ah, there was a fish. Oh, you can see it. That's a big, big fish. Uh, one of our neighbors yesterday threw his fishing pole in and brought out about a two foot long catfish. And I was standing on the bank watching. Oh, there's a bunch of big fish. You can see them all. I don't know if you can see them, but they're all right up at the surface. But I watched one yesterday swimming around. The thing was at least two feet long. It was huge. And then about 15 minutes later, the guy pulled in the big catfish. And they, they let it, you know, put it back after he caught it. But there's a lot of big fish in here. Aren't there? So we're, what, this is day three after Lefty's injury. And he's, you know, still gimping quite a bit. Uh, he seems to do better walking on the pavement than in the grass. So we've been taking long pavement walks each morning. And once he gets in his trot, he seems okay. But uh, I'm just, I feel so bad for the guy, you know. One thing that I have to do when we're inside the truck, I have to be extra certain when I'm stepping around him that I don't accidentally squish on that paw because I know he will not like me if I do that. Hey, I don't want you going in that water. So I'm really careful moving around in the truck. You know, it's kind of tight quarters. He likes to lay right in the middle of the grass or the, <laughs> the grass. He likes to lay right in the middle of the carpet. And when I'm cooking and stuff and I'm moving around a lot, I have to step over and around him. So I've been giving Lefty the meds uh, two times a day, it's antibiotics, and the other one is uh, anti-inflammation slash pain. Um, so I, I'm putting it in his food and mixing it in there two times a day so he's been getting his meds I don't see you know like that that toe doesn't look different than the size of the other foot's toe like it's not swollen up or anything so but he favors it quite a bit he'll stand with his paw up in the air quite a lot just to take the load off of it so this is the Gilbert Olson Memorial Park uh, with the two rivers, public water access. It's a little boat ramp right here. And this is the campground, Gilbert Olson campground that we're at. Got a double rainbow. That's good luck, right? On our way to work. Sun is coming up behind us. He doesn't look too excited.
is the Humboldt work location. Thank you.